Hello everyone and welcome to the basics of telling your family story. My name is Shannon Combs Bennett and I'm really excited to share some tips and tricks and how easy it is, I swear, 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 it is to get started on this type of a project. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about how to get started. This is a warning though, if you're looking for ideas and examples of how to do a genealogical name, date, place, often powerful type lineage book, this is not the lecture for you. So this is more of a how to get started writing the stories of your family, um, how to share your research with other people in a easily, I guess, easily digested, easily um, uh, to consume. <laughs> I must be hungry. Um, but, but in a way that people will find appealing and want to read your stories. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, family trees, they're a little boring, you know, they're meh, names, dates, people, lines. So why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we publish pedigree charts or fan charts? And yeah, it's a nice way to see everybody at one time. And maybe I'm just weird, but those stories, right? The stories we find out about our family and our ancestry, that's what we really need to be collecting and passing on in addition to the names, dates, and places, right? And it shouldn't just be a list, right? You could start with a list. Okay, so here are the things that they did. This is the places they go in, blah, blah, blah. But you should fill in the information with a narrative, right? Fill it in with social history. What was happening in their town? What was happening in their state or their county or the world at the time? How did it affect your ancestors? Would it affect your ancestors? Um, did they have to move because of something that was happening? Make the story accessible to everybody. Make it interesting. Make people want to read it and hear it because hopefully you're sharing this with your family. And as being the same family from the same people, you would think they would want to know a little bit about where y'all came from. So think about it. What kind of stories or books or papers or maybe just a journal that you never share and you keep to yourself? What is it you want to tell? So some common practices for types of genealogical works. There's always the memoir, right? So you're telling the story of somebody or autobiography yourself, because let's be honest, you are the best person to tell your family history. And if you haven't thought about writing yourself down, your stories, I mean, diaries are awesome, but sometimes just writing the stories down or collecting the stories from your family about you, your siblings, your parents, you know, that type of thing. You're the best person. You were there, right? Um, are you looking for a strict genealogy book where, you know, you're going to do little vignettes of people? Um, or is it a story about a specific time, person, place? Do you want to do like half 500 words, half page? Or are you thinking, you know, novel length? There's no wrong answer. This is about what you want to do. And don't let anybody tell you that there's a right or wrong answer because writing is a very personal thing. And we all do it a little bit differently, especially if it's just for us. And it's not something that we're putting out there for mass marketing. So think about what pieces, when you're getting ready to start to write, you need to start out with a little bit more than just basic facts, right? So pull together your documents, really look at it. If you're talking about somebody who is within recent memory, um, one, if they're still alive, can you interview them? Um, are there people still alive who knew them or who have done research on that uh, person, place, or thing? Can you interview them, get some actual narrative in there? Don't forget your social history. Look through newspapers, history books. Do you have anything basically lying around that you could use and pull together as a source for your narrative? And think about 
sometimes people, oh, they're like, I don't know what to write. I, I don't know how to write. I just, I'm not so sure. Sometimes the littlest thing will trigger a story. And I have noticed this with my own father who's in his 80s. And we'll just be sitting around, something will pop on the TV, someone will say a word, something will happen, and he'll go, oh, I remember this great story. And we're Midwesterners, so we can talk anybody's ear off and tell a yarn, let me tell you. So, you know, when a story gets triggered like that, I am like, in my mind, writing it down because as soon as he leaves, I'm writing it down so that we don't forget it. You know, we're going to do this story. Um, and then it's sometimes it's fun to, like, my father, two of his three siblings are still alive. So, on occasion, I've been able to talk to them and say, So, dad was telling me the story. And they'll go, oh, that's not right. And sometimes by talking to other family members or other people who have investigated this ancestry, um, you can hear other stories and other points of view because not everybody sees or hears or experiences the same event the same way. And gathering everybody's point of view can make for really good storytelling. So this is why I encourage people to carry a notebook with them. It can just be a little bit pocket notebook, right? So you can write things down. Or if you have a smartphone, you know, use the voice recorder app and send do voice recordings to yourself as you get ideas or you hear stories. Or if you're talking to somebody and they start telling a story, you can say, can I record this? Because this is really good and I don't want to forget it. Always ask. <laughs> Never record somebody without their permission. Okay, so, but the most important thing is when you get to writing, just write it down. Put pen to paper, put fingers to keys, whatever you have to do. Don't worry about how it sounds. Don't worry about editing. Don't worry about formatting. It's more important when you start, okay, just to get it from your head to the page in front of you. All right, let it, write it as it comes, let it just, let it flow. And this is another reason to carry a notebook because if you're sitting around for a little bit and you get a great idea on, on, the, on the story or something you wanna say later, and you can just you know spend a few minutes jotting it down, okay? You can worry about prettying it up, gussying it up, making it look you know all beautiful later and formatting and spell correcting and all that kind of stuff. But the most important thing and the hardest thing for people to do is to just start, okay? So you're writing for yourself right now. Just put it down on paper. Don't worry about the rest until later. Nobody's gonna see it unless you show it to them. Another thing, sometimes it's easier to write, especially if you're thinking about writing um, a chapters or a large number of vignettes or a multi-page story. It's easier to do things and your brain thinks it's easier to do things if you break it into chunks. Uh, there's a couple sayings that when I say this that always pop into my mind. When I was told as a child is you can always eat an elephant one bite at a time. You know, thinking about eating the elephant is just overwhelming and anxiety ridden. But you know, if you take little bite sized pieces, you could eat the whole thing. Um, another one of my grandmothers told me was, you know, if you shoot for the moon, if you miss, you still land in the stars, which, you know, just do your best, shoot for that goal. And if you don't make it, at least you got away from here and you're on your way, right? So. If you need to, write in segments. You can always tie them in later. Just remember you need three things. A beginning, the meaty middle part, and the end. So you're making a story sandwich. <laughs> and of course, every story needs a hook. And that should be part of your introduction. Why is the person wanting to read your story? Okay, sometimes it's, if you can start it out with the introduction, uh, why they should read it, use a quote, um, playing on or talk, or using emotions is a good way to get somebody to want to keep going. 
Um, think about some of the good memoirs that you may have read, biographies, vignettes, those types of things. What were their hooks? How did they get you to keep reading? Okay. And remember, it's your history, it's your ancestry, it's your family. Don't make things up because future genealogists will curse you. <laughs> Just write about what you have, right? write about the facts you have to, and don't forget to tell people where you got them, okay? Just because you're telling a story doesn't mean you get away from source citations. They go hand in hand, um, but really just Sometimes the truth is wilder than fiction, you know, just write it down. People will appreciate. Another thing you can do is use ephemera for your writing. And an ephemera is, are those little tchotchke things and stuff you have sitting around and, you know, mugs, pictures, medals, quilts, bookcases, chairs, whatever it is. You could put a picture on your paper that you're writing, right? Describe it, explain why it's important, talk about the provenance of it. Uh, what do you remember about it? What are the stories associated with it? Uh, pick a document and walk the person who's reading it, you know, pick it apart, describe everything that's in the document to them, explain why it's important, how it can be used. And one of the ways you can do this is to create just a timeline for a person, right? And then when you fill out all the basic information, you go back in, fill out, you know, the social history type information, and then use that as your outline, okay? Got an already built in outline with the timeline. All you have to do is add words to the events. Writing prompts are a great way to get your fingers and your brain trained to do this type of research and this type of writing, okay? You can find all sorts of prompts online. Literally Google genealogy writing prompts and a good dozen will pop up. Uh, and just pick one and get started and set aside time, maybe not every day if you're really busy, but you know, once or twice a week where you're gonna sit down and pick a writing prompt at random and then just start writing about it. It may be about you. It may be about somebody else in your close family, maybe about something you're researching, but just get the juices going because the more you do it, the easier it is. So this is where we're going to put some things to the test. And what I want you to do is there's going to be three slides that I'm going to go through. And the video, I'd like you to get out a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil or whatever you want. And when the image comes on the slide, I want you to pause the video, okay? And take a few minutes to write about it, all right? Write about what you see. If you remember the historical event, uh, what your feelings were, like if, did you experience it or have you only heard about it? Have you only read about it? Uh, maybe what type of emotions the picture evokes within you? It could be about anything, okay? Give yourself a, you know, if you need to set a timer, give yourself no more than five minutes, okay? And then push play again. We'll talk a little bit about it and then we'll go on to the next one and you can do this three times. Okay, so let's get started. All right. First image before you should push pause, the IBM personal computer. Okay, everybody hit pause. Okay, we're back from the pause. Now I'm sure this was, could be very interesting depending on your age. <laughs> some of you may have never seen a computer like this before, and some of you may have remembered when they were standard. Um, I am in that age group where I don't remember the really old ones, but I do remember this style. Um, it was a style that, you know, I remember my mom using in school when she was in grad school. So uh, for me, it brings back memories of my parents in college classes and that darn green screen that, you know, if you left it on, it etched the words into it. Um, 
so I can, to me, it brings back memories of my childhood, you know, and watching my parents on the computer and the different type of games my parents bought for me to play for education. So it's, you know, I get really warm, fuzzy feelings. Some of you may be like, oh my God, that's a brick. Uh. Or maybe you have memories, you know, using it yourself. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Buzz Aldrin salutes the U.S. flag on the moon. All right, so everybody pause the video. Okay, so hopefully we've spent a few minutes talking about this. And for me, this is a little older than I am, so I did not get to experience it, but I still have feelings of awe and excitement and inspiration. Um, I could have talked about the stories that my parents and my grandparents told when I asked them about this. I could very easily talk about, um, for me, for, well, for, for my children, if I was writing this, I would talk about uh, how, you know, this was inspiration for uh, one of their family members to go in and become a rocket scientist um, and a metallurgical engineer and how he worked later on space shuttles so I could do a family tie into this. You could really write about anything. All right, last one. Family watching TV in 1958. All right, so everybody, let's hit that pause button for a few minutes. Okay, so you could have really gone in any direction here. You could have written about the 50s, and if you were alive in the 1950s, which you did, or if there's anything that brought back memories to you, uh, you could have written about, you know, your family getting together to watch TV or have family time. Didn't have to be in the 1950s. I see those Coca-Cola glass bottles, and that really takes me back to when I was a kid drinking glass Coca-Cola bottles. I don't really have those anymore in a lot of places. So there's lots of different ways you could go. You could talk about family. You could talk about family units. You could talk about what type of shows you used to watch together, um, hanging out together, all sorts of stuff, right? Okay. So don't forget, use the facts. Facts, like I said, sometimes the truth is more exciting than the fiction. So take your facts as an outline for you, what you're going to write. Fill in the details from other sources, history, social history. Use images, use documents, use stock photos like ones I just showed you to get that visceral reaction from your reader or even from yourself to help you. Um, just write, get it out of your head and onto paper. You can always edit later. Okay, and never forget your notebook. Always carry something with you uh, to write it down in or your phone to do a voice recorder in. Or if you got really fast fingers, you can type yourself a note in those, on those uh, phones. And on that note, I hope you all had a good time. I hope you learned something new. And I hope you all have lots of fun researching, writing, and telling your family story. Hope you have a great day.